Warning, the following podcast fucks. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by the new substitute for long-term care, Episcopaliative Care. It's like palliative care, except it's imaginary and we don't take it all that seriously. Episcopaliative Care. I'm literally just describing offering thoughts and prayers. And now, The Scathing Atheist. This is Joe Mudak, author of dozens of erotic ebooks such as Women's Lubrication Movement, The Bimbonic Plague, and In for a Penny, In for a Pounding. And I'm here to tell you that we did, in fact, evolve from some very filthy, very horny monkey men and women. Thursday. It's December 1st. And he has COVID. Tontine, yep. baby. Okay. If I start to die, I demand you do jumping jacks. I will not go first. That's fair. That <laughs> is fair. No illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Danny DeVito's New Jersey, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Waycross, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, Christians once again put the mass in mass shooting. Marjorie Taylor Greene commits a war crime on a Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> and a creationist gets sentenced to more years in prison than he thinks there are in history. <laughs> <laughs> First, the diatribe. Well, the opening salvos in this year's War on Christmas have been fired, I know, because I was there to see it. On Monday, I was at the mall, and as I walked by the kiosk that sells phone cases, the dude there said, Happy Holidays to me, which, as we all know, is just another way of saying, Fuck Jesus and his stupid birthday. And as we stood there amid the Christmas decorations and the Christmas sales with Christmas music wafting in around us under the shadow of the Santa Pavilion, we shared a conspiratorial cackle about how secular this time of year has become. I mean, honest, this, this whole war on Christmas thing, like, that is a perfect microcosm of everything wrong with American Christians right now, isn't it? Right? It's based on a bigoted knee-jerk resistance to inclusivity. It's a long overdue challenge to their privilege that they've mislabeled as persecution. It's an imaginary fear that would be inconsequential even if it was real. It's rooted in spite, anger, and pettiness. It's an artificial paranoia concocted by Fox News to retain viewership. Like, like That list could be applied to damn near any political motive that stirs up evangelicals, right? And look, even as a person who spent nearly a decade pointing to this as a red flag about where the Christian mindset was, I wildly underestimated how scared we should have been about it. Because let, let's be clear about what happened here, right? So a bunch of progressive-minded people started to realize how alienated they would feel if they were part of a religious minority that didn't celebrate Christmas and were surrounded by all this Christmas shit for like six weeks a year. Right, They realized that the ubiquitous greeting Merry Christmas every time you went anywhere was unnecessarily exclusionary when there was a perfectly good and already broadly used and recognized alternative sitting right there in Happy Holidays. Right, So on the holiday that's ostensibly about peace on earth and goodwill towards men, just men, like even their aspirational phrases betray their bigotry, but still. But on that day, people decided to send a more inclusive, more international, more peaceful, more goodwillful message and Christians got angry. Right? Like, like we've been in this boiling pot the whole time, so it's easy to lose track of what a dick move that is. I mean, not to be grandiose here, but the conscious decision to move towards happy holidays was literally a message of love and unity. It was a way for a Christian-centric culture to recognize the feelings of the 23 million Americans that don't celebrate Christmas and the, you know, whatever, 55% of humanity that doesn't. And before we could fully extend that olive branch... Those motherfuckers side-tackled us. The end result, of course, is that the minorities that this change was all about in the first place are now even more alienated than they'd have been if we had just said Merry Christmas the whole time. Because feeling like you're not welcome in the wider culture probably doesn't hurt quite as bad as being explicitly told that you're not welcome in the wider culture. More so, being told that your influence is an existential threat to the wider culture, that including you is somehow an act of war against the status quo. War. They use that fucking word. And perhaps seeking to head off the charge that they're frothing mad over something as basic as fucking recognizing other people's feelings, they try to pretend that we're the angry ones in this. 
Right. I remember arguing with my dad about this and his entire framing of the argument, no doubt gleaned from Fox News coverage, was that he just couldn't imagine why anybody would be offended by Merry Christmas. Even if you don't celebrate the holiday, surely you want to have a Merry 25th of December, don't you? But that's a perversion of the actual fight that's happening. Right. Like our side was never offended. It wasn't about being offended on our side. It was about being inclusive. If we're angry at anything, it's that you pushed back against that goal. You're the ones motivated by anger. I mean, you know, the, the fucking lines are blurred at this point because these days you assholes are often saying Merry Christmas out of spite. And sure, that pisses me off. But that's certainly not how it started. That, that wasn't the motive in the first place. But that's the important thing to bear in mind when it comes time to adjudicate this at your family dinner or the break room at work or whatever, where our side was motivated by joy and goodwill. Theirs was motivated by despair and hostility. And that's just yet more evidence that we never should have trusted them with this holiday in the first place. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the draw against Wales and the draw against England on my win against Iran, <laughs> Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas! Are you ready to kick the Netherlands' ass? Okay, I'm not even sure they really exist. It sounds made up. It sounds like right. the most made-up lie <laughs> name for a country. Right. Okay, no lie. I looked up what the slur is for the Dutch in the racial slur database that is on the, the internet. Wh- I'm really <laughs> not happy that that's a thing. <laughs> it is. It is. And the slur for Dutch people that I found is cloggy. <laughs> okay. So I almost <laughs> said something very close to cloggy yep. there. It's cloggy, I so I, it going, I will be that throwing existed. that one around a lot. This is the hill I get canceled on. <laughs> cloggy. A lot of cloggies getting thrown around cloggies. on this podcast. <laughs> and speaking of good news and insults, the totals are in. We are excited to share this year's grand total for Vulgarity for Charity. We dialed back our expectations a bit this year, given the state of the economy and everything, but it turns out we didn't need to because y'all came through for us yet again. With the match, we were able to raise a staggering $400,848 and 48 cents. Our goal was 300 grand, guys. You smashed it. So thanks for that and look for more insults coming soon. Especially if you're a cloggy. (laughs) See? See, Yeah, no, it's going to be everywhere. It's here to stay. Anyway, in our lead story tonight. Making a character. (laughs) <laughs> Last week, I had to apologize to the international listeners for dedicating the diatribe to something almost entirely American. And this week, I'm going to have to apologize in the same vein for the lead story. But instead of Thanksgiving, this time, the almost uniquely American subject is a mass shooting. U.S. Oh, no. Okay. Y- yeah, right. Sorry to transition straight from good news to tragedy, but that's what I'm going to have to do because on the night of November 19th, the eve of the Trans Day of Remembrance, a 22-year-old homophobe in Colorado Springs, Colorado, burst into an LGBTQ nightclub called Club Q and started shooting. Five people were killed and another 25 were injured. And in case anybody was in any doubt that the violent invective of Christian leaders was a major cause of the shooting, Christian leaders have spent the intervening week and a half unapologetically reminding us of that with ever more violent invective. Okay, American Christianity is terrorism. That's what it is. It's stochastic terrorism. If you're making me say things like, okay, but Gitmo has a few good uses. Like, I could think of (laughs) it. You're doing something wrong that has to end forever. You have to go away forever. Yeah. If, If the cost of grandma not feeling sad about death is mass shootings... Maybe grandma should just be sad about yeah, death. It's there you go. Fucking sad. It's not that bad. Cloggy. You know, it turned out she was sad any fucking way. Yeah. So, <laughs> of course, whenever we talk about this on the show, somebody's going to write in to tell us that our examples are too fringe to be relevant, that, yes, there's a lot of homophobia and transphobia in Christianity, but the celebratory and violent reactions, those are confined to the periphery. Right. So let me start this reaction off from one Jenna Ellis, former legal advisor to the former goddamn fucking president. So, like, you know, not exactly on the outskirts of power here. Fairly prominent. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. She bemoaned the coverage of the event, focusing on the tragedy of the shooting itself and not the aftermath, specifically the part where the five fatalities burn in hell for eternity. Quote, the five people who were killed in the nightclub that night, there is no evidence at all that they were Christian. And so assuming that they have not accepted the truth of the gospel of Jesus and affirm Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life, they are reaping the consequences of having eternal damnation. And what? that is far, far greater. And we should be having that conversation. 
end quote. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, notice how she doesn't feel the need to point out that same thing when there's like a mass shooting at Walmart, right? So uh, that whole Germany thing happened. Uh, nobody's having the conversation about where those ghost people went. I'm just asking questions. I'm trying to right. calibrate our set. <laughs> These are the questions. Yeah. yeah. And yet, when I set up a gallonometer to measure the urine at Jenna's grave when she dies, I'm going to be the bad guy. So it's like, you know, <laughs> you can't win. Yeah. I, 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 liter meter definitely works better there. I'm oh, say. liter yeah. meter. See that? Yeah. <laughs> Embarrass me so, on it. Yeah, no, metric, me metric is always better. So, yeah. And so in, in case, by the way, that that's not vicious enough for you, we also got a sermon read hate screed from Aaron Thompson of the Sure Foundation Baptist Church in Vancouver, Washington, in which he insisted that the shooting was a, quote, good thing because it meant that the victims were, quote, not here anymore to molest kids. End quote. And while it's easy to write off any effort by a Christian preacher to accuse somebody else of molesting kids as an example of Bugs Bunny's what's over there technique, it's important to remember that this is exactly the kind of vitriol that leads to violent acts against the LGBTQ community. Exactly. Yeah. Every right wing accusation is a confession. The, the, everything these people say should get reported to the police through an opposite day filter yeah. as a rule. Right. right. Just, oh, wow. That guy's molesting K. He said it. So, yep. yeah, right. So, so but, but, but there was one good reaction that I wanted to highlight, and that came in the form of vandalism. Now, while we here at Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC don't officially condone vandalizing Christian institutions or think it's a super awesome thing that super cool people do, I can't help but feel sympathy <laughs> with whoever it was that spray painted their blood is on your hands, five lives taken on the sign out in front of the focus on the family's Colorado Springs headquarters. That's literally true. That's yes. just a factual yeah. statement. Right. This is a thing. Well, yes, and, I, and in case you do, weren't convinced, the Vandals also provided a letter of a, a explanation through the Colorado People's Press drawing attention to the group's long support for homophobia, transphobia, and white supremacy. Okay, so here's a, another true statement, just off above nothing. Everyone who works at Focus on the Family goes out in public sometimes. And uh, no, that's the end of my thought. But uh, yeah, no, that, it's true. That thing. is you have a to be very to say legal true thing yep. to think. Yeah. Also, what, what, one last piece of good news. A veteran and a trans woman took the shooter's gun and beat the shit out of him so badly that he couldn't be charged for three days while he was in the hospital. Obviously not worth it. But the dude's mugshot looks like he tried to give a cat a pill. And yeah. You, know, you got to celebrate what you can. No, it's worth looking up. So, yeah, tragic as this event is, it's nice to see that some people are making an effort to shine a light on the groups that are responsible. I just wish those people included the goddamn mainstream press. That'd be great. Who still seems to have the words radical Christian terrorism locked away in a fucking safe somewhere. <sighs> and in the mountain we climb it news. <laughs> Solid. One of the apologetics you hear quite a bit when you talk about the harms of religion for a living is a thing I like to call the pocket of stupid, right? These are people who will tell you just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I believe in X or my Christian beliefs actually make me support Y. And as though you've never heard of lying before, right? Because just because I believe one stupid thing doesn't mean I'm more likely to believe in other stupid things isn't just blatantly untrue. Even if it were true, it's not the brag that people think it is. <laughs> and we got even more evidence of the untrue truthiness of that this week as a new Pew report tells us that highly religious are the worst worried about climate change. Okay, that's weird phrasing. But yes, in a sense, religious people are the worst worried about everything. They worry <laughs> wrong yes. every single goddamn time. Yeah. Well, so, but there's an important takeaway here too. Like if you find yourself in a group we're admitting that you're part of the group in public, like forces you to then feel like you have to say like, you know, that you believe also, but you, I do believe in thermometers, for example. Maybe you reexamine the membership that got you there in the first place. <laughs> no, yeah, you'd, you'd mm -hmm. think, you know, so folks were asked to agree or disagree with three statements about God's relationship to the climate. The first was the earth is sacred and only 68 percent of highly religious people agreed with that. Leaving this podcaster to question, where the fuck 32% of highly religious people think is sacred, if not the earth? Well, heaven for eternity, I think. Yeah. So I'd say 68% of those people are liars. 
the place you go before eternity is mathematically zero in sacred importance. It's equal to zero. Right, yeah. It's a fucking lobby with baby cancer. <laughs> yeah. No, I've seen it compared to the celestial welcome map, but I guess in, in Christianity's case, there it had there has to be like a question mark after welcome, but other than that, yeah. yeah. And the mat has <laughs> baby cancer, just to reiterate. Right. Yep. That's a crazy mat. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you get that? More of a celestial pop quiz than anything. Yeah, exactly. So moving on, 92% of highly religious people completely or mostly agree that God gave humans a duty to protect and care for the earth. But only 42% of highly religious people believe that climate change is a very serious problem. So maybe they're like shitty house sitters. Like, like they know it's their job to watch it, but they're not going to like water the plants or whatever. Mm. And then, of course, finally, just 39 percent of highly religious people believe that the earth is getting warmer because of human activity. Or to put it more succinctly, 39 percent of highly religious people are fucking stupid. <laughs> Wait, no, no. A hundred percent of highly religious people are are fucking stupid, at least on, on that one Subject, 39% are also joining in on the stupidity on this other subject, (laughs) too, is what we've learned. Yeah. So, in conclusion, believing dumb stuff makes you dumber. And when Christians point out that they believe themselves to be the exception to that rule, they are almost always not. So, maybe, as Noah said, just stop being wrong about the one thing you're wrong about, rather than talking about how right you are about the things you're not wrong about. It it seems pretty simple to me. (laughs) uh, There's a solution. And in Turkey in the Raw News, <laughs> that'll make sense when I get to it. Marjorie Taylor Greene, she got some advice from a PR expert in, you know, nice sounding bigotry, which is extra insidious. Her new message is speaking directly to trans kids and telling them to stop being trans because they're perfect already. But but they're, but they're also trans already. Yeah, it's so. confusing for her. Also, Match, dash, catch. Your entire religion, nay, the very primal fear from whence your religion springs is no, they're not perfect right, already. Yes. They need the love of your invisible friend whose son is also him. That's your whole thing, yep. Match. Yep. It's your whole thing. So here's the exact words from MTG. She tweeted, quote, if you're under 18 and people are telling you to cut off your breast, or have a surgery that turns your penis inside out to make a vagina, you're a victim of child abuse. Is that how it works? I don't think that's how it works. Continuing, get away from those people and find safe people who tell you that you're already perfect. End quote. She's, oh, okay, but but I'm telling you something's wrong with you and you should avoid people who tell you something's wrong with you. Look, she accidentally got it right, which is the only way in which she ever gets it right. So way to go. Yeah. MTG, I guess. Yeah. Also, hey, credit where credit's due. If you know someone who's stupid enough to think gender affirming surgery is turning your penis inside <laughs> out, you should avoid that person, yeah. whether or not they're supportive. That that person is a Cenobite, actually. So they are <laughs> they're not on your side. And just for the record, bottom surgery is not performed on minors, and top surgery is only performed on minors under very rare conditions. Also, for the record, breast augmentation surgery for minors is way more common. So yep. you're perfect, except God made a bunch of breasts that are too small. Otherwise, perfect. So obviously, she's a bigot and a hypocrite and an idiot or some combination of those. Nothing new. But I had an ulterior motive for talking about MTG this week. Here sure it is. I knew it was going to come she up. She cooked the most revolting Thanksgiving turkey <laughs> I've ever seen. And then proudly posted about it on Twitter. There's a picture right here for you. Why did she put up the picture? Yeah, no, it looks like a fucking xenomorph with albinism. <laughs> yeah, it, it, does. it looks like it wipes front to back. But, okay. <laughs> Embarrassing. And along with her disgusting white ass turkey that she clearly forgot to thaw, just so very clearly yeah, that was frozen uh-huh. when it went into the goddamn oven. <laughs> along with that, MTG added an explanation that her son can easily beat up a turkey and kill it, assuming her son has an assault rifle. And that's an important life skill that she's very proud of that her son has. So obviously the internet very quickly roasted her 
ball of salmonella tartare that she made. <laughs> and then she tried to fix it with another picture. This time, yes. it was a leg of, I think, venison that is, it. it's not looking good. No. It, it's like she left it on a dashboard. It's rough. They're so supposed to hoof on it. Like, like her uh -huh. legit response <laughs> to people making fun of her redneck cooking acumen was to post a picture of some roasted roadkill. <laughs> yeah. Really? Exactly. See? <laughs> See, this is what I always say. Everyone always makes fun of the Bosnick family nut loaf until you remember <laughs> that the same half of the country that voted for Donald Trump gets to decide the cooking temperature of raw meat once a year. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Got to call that turkey safety hotline. I forget the number. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, the veiled hate tweet from MTG. It's the kind of nonsense word salad that's going to make the bigots, especially the Christian ones, feel confident in saying their hate speech out loud, probably over the holidays. And that's because it's a non-compliment. It's horrible bigotry, but it sounds like they're trying for a compliment in their head. And also because it taps into the absurd worldview that God created everyone perfectly, even though, as Eli pointed out, that's it's the opposite of that. But that's all fucking stupid. Of course, nobody's perfect. But the way we deal with that is we all have medical procedures sometimes and medicine to help with whatever ails us. Hopefully everyone sees through this bullshit and these bigots have severe consequences. Yeah. Well, and barring severe ones that, that at least that they're condemned to eat this fucking mayonnaise sandwich of a turkey every year. God, it's so terrible. Just it's it's the, worst. Ben it's the worst. It's the worst. Hero levels of desiccated. Yes. It looks like <laughs> Snooki's face. <laughs> And on that note, we're going to take a quick break from a word from this week's sponsor, us. Hey, podcast listener. Do you ever wish your favorite podcasters would crawl out of your earbuds so you can view their human flesh? Well, buckle into your rocket boots because God Awful Movies is coming back to Seattle March 18th at the Broadway Performance Hall. There'll be jokes. <laughs> Shenanigans. And hopefully Noah will be the only one with drugs in his system. But that's not all. Why not give the gift of us this Christmas with either our VIP or platinum ticket packages? But don't wait. Those tickets sell out so fast, our last show sold out in less than a week. Whoopsie. Get your tickets at GodAwfulMoviesLive.com or check the show notes for this episode. Again, that's GodAwfulMoviesLive.com. The Seattle Live Show. Bring your thruple, hippies. And we're back. Next up in headlines in OK, but some Adnans definitely did it news. It's hard to believe that a person could win an appeal on a 1,075 year prison sentence and then wind up with something way worse on a retrial. But that is exactly what happened What <laughs> to Turkish cult leader Adnan Akhtar, who now faces a sentence of 8,658 years in prison <laughs> for crimes ranging from illegal recording of personal data to torture and sexual abuse of children. Though, to be fair, with good behavior, he could get out in like just a hair over 6,000 years. What happened in this appeal? The judge is like, okay, the DA is asking for a bajillion years, but <laughs> willing to take a plea for 8,658. That's a good yeah, compromise right. right there. You should probably take it. Okay. On the plus side, he gets to put his life extension claims from his cult leader days to the ultimate test here, right? Yeah, he right. makes it out of this sentence. No, there Boy, you go. Boy, will my face be red. <laughs> So, no, obviously, this is a mighty fucked up story. Akhtar has been a prominent figure in Turkey for decades, and he's the principal reason that Turkey ranks even below the U.S. when it comes to acceptance of evolution. Under the pen name Harun Yaya, Akhtar published a three-volume textbook called The Atlas of Creation, starting in 2006, that argues against evolution by natural selection. And it's so arrow-riddled that on multiple occasions, it uses photos of fishing lures and labels them as real fucking insects. <laughs> but yeah, no, multiple times. That's fantastic. Like to the point where like critics are like, no, I mean, I know who tied this. He's famous for tying this. <laughs> but despite its laughable content, it was so effective in arguing in favor of Muslim creationism that the nation removed evolution from school curriculum altogether in 2017. 
Okay, if this guy makes it through a sentence, he needs to get a job with Ken Ham at that museum. It's just being like, <laughs> the metal hook fly is technically types of, it's a type of air dog, so it's <laughs> the right amount of types. So the, the following year, Akhtar was arrested on unrelated charges of like being a supremely evil cult leader. Specifically, he was accused of... <gasps> Forming a criminal organization, sexual abuse of children, sexual assault, child kidnapping, sexual harassment, blackmailing, false imprisonment, political and military espionage, fraud, money laundering, violations of privacy, forgery, coercion, slander, perjury, smuggling, tax evasion, bribery, torture, and the aforementioned illegal recording of personal data. And no, that list is not exhaustive. Who's the cop who got him on the illegal recording of data after all Right, that? well, there was a bunch of those. <laughs> like, I left out all the bullshit fascist laws that he also broke along the way. But to be clear... This was a bad dude. Like he had like a thousand girlfriends. I'm not exaggerating. Like a thousand girlfriends who all looked weirdly similar and he had them all dye their hair the same color and wear their eye makeup the same way. It was really fucking freaky. And at least one of them said that they were repeatedly raped and then forced to take birth control afterwards. When the police raided his house, they, they recovered like 69,000 contraceptive pills. So do you think he got the sex number times a thousand on purpose? It just <laughs> seems like an oddly whimsical choice for a serial rapist to make, right? I, I, I have to think it's just a a coincidence, but maybe. Yeah, I don't think 69 gets you pregnant. So, so, yeah. Not the way I'm doing it. Glad to see that this dude is in jail. How do you do it? Alone. <laughs> I, I mean, as, as much as I'm generally against excessive jail sentences, I feel like is some people kind of need to be locked away forever. And this is exactly that kind of guy, right? And if nothing else... This sets an important precedence in Turkey that a cult leader can be held responsible for the crimes that they encourage their followers to commit. And that could come in handy if they ever drag Erdogan out of the fucking presidential complex. So, yep, here's hoping. And in your rubber, I'm super duper glue news. If you paid attention to some of the more batshit candidates on offer in the recent midterms, the name Patricia Kent might be familiar. Kent, who looks like she bought an old lady wig and put it on top of her old lady hair, ran an independent <laughs> write-in campaign on what might as well have been called the Tucker Carlson Broke Grandma's Brain Platform. It's like her hair is is floating. It's like it's uh it's levitating somehow. Yeah, yeah it was like her? a bad it's it's like clipping in a bad video game. <laughs> like her character was supposed to go through a door. It's not working out. It's a weird toy you get a museum gift shop or something. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, among the unhinged ravings Kent called a platform was her anti-LGBT views, wherein she accused the queer community of grooming children. Well, turns out sometimes the kettle is just looking in the mirror because this week investigators released that Kent actually lost her job as a middle school teacher for, you guessed it, sexually, it sexually grooming, grooming young girls. Young girls. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Okay, wow. so this person said to herself, if only I was a lesbian, I'd have a much easier time being a pedophile with young girls. And she did not hear it. Yeah. And she made a bigot platform out of that. Sure. Did. That their opposite day bullshit is so consistent that I'm starting to think that atheists go to heaven when we die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So according to the left wing rag, the Salt Lake City Tribune and, you know, that super left wing organization, the. Utah Professional Practices Advisory <laughs> Commission, while working as a middle school teacher, Kent used her position to, quote, foster intimate and dependent relationships with young teenage girls. And, quote, UPPAC also found evidence that Kent engaged in sexual relationships with at least one of the girls, but the evidence wasn't sufficient to bring formal charges. Once more, proving that the true fear at the heart of every conservative is that the rest of the world is as shitty as they are. Yup. Exactly. So what does the ever so concerned about grooming Patricia Kent have to say about this? Quote, if I was guilty of what I was accused of, I would have been put in jail. OK, I wasn't. I was paid off and that should be the end of it. But I am not one to live in the past. Like I said, I've moved on with my life. <laughs> I continue to do what I need to do to live a normal life. End quote. Also, do you see the space between my hair and my head? It's insane. I don't know how it happened. So, hey, hey, hey lady, you know who never wants to live in the past? The guilty. Those are the <laughs> yeah. So the good news is that Kent brought in just under 8.3% of the vote, 
Okay. Uh, turns out that if you're running on the platform of being a fucking idiot, a writing requirement is a real deterrent to your face. <laughs> but um, this does bring up an important topic that uh, we've touched on a little bit here and there throughout headlines today. But uh, we don't get to stress enough here on The Scathing Atheist. If someone tells you they're worried about queer people grooming children, they're a pedophile. And you should say that flat out. Just, hey, man, I can't help but notice how much you're making up other pedophiles. Are you a pedophile? I know it's too late to toss that one out of the Thanksgiving table, but there's <laughs> always Christmas. Get on it, people. I feel yep. like I put a question mark pedophile, but it was I meant period. <laughs> I meant you are. Yeah. God. And finally tonight. The sophisticated, urbane <laughs> gelato lovers of Birmingham, Alabama are finally going to have access to their favorite Italian dessert in a Christian-friendly environment. I love this story. It's about time. I think it's about time. Thanks to the pious owners of Bellagio Cola Francesco, Amish Catholic Italophiles will have a very comfortable place to get some stracciatella without having to worry about common whores and their short pants like you do otherwise. <laughs> Instead, the establishment is going to have a very strict, uh, what I would describe as an Amish Catholic dress code. So here's the rules at Villaggio Cola Francesco of Birmingham, Alabama. It says this on a big poster before you enter the shop. Quote, this place is different. It's about God, family, and country. Sick, they forgot a comma. Section one, <laughs> it's about God. Modest dress is required. No short dresses or shorts above the knee. Above the knee? Above the knee? The knee. Yeah. Culottes would just barely get you in, maybe. <laughs> also, no tank tops, spandex leggings, exposed shoulders, exposed cleavage shoulders. showing and back, <laughs> etc. I don't know what that means, but bigot about the cleavage. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> Profanity or actions which do not fit the norm of Christian behavior is not allowed. If your husband dies in my gelato shop and you don't immediately fuck his brother, you can get <laughs> yeah, her out. Exactly. Or if he pulls out. Yeah, right. No, I love that it's profanity that doesn't fit the norms of Christian behavior, though, right? So as long as you're saying <laughs> fuck the Jews, I guess you're okay. But yeah, the like, norm of Christian behavior clause seems like a great loophole for some fun. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us how it goes, Birmingham people. Let us know. So the rules aren't done yet. Section two, it's about family. Quote, conversation and meeting of hearts is at the center of Italian culture. Because of this, there are no cell phones, laptops, tablets, etc. allowed. This is strictly enforced. You will be asked to leave for disturbing the peaceful atmosphere. So, so what? They want you to leave your phones in a pile outside <laughs> so you can enjoy the conversation of Italian Catholics in Birmingham, in Birmingham Alabama? Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> I think that's literally hell. I think you're describing yes. hell. Yep. Right. And, and, and hey, man, if you thought checking Facebook disturbs your peaceful atmosphere, just wait till you see what I do when you tell me to leave over it, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to section three. It's about country. Quote, this place has been prayerfully designed, <laughs> prayerfully designed, I'm going to repeat that, to create peace and love for our homeland. What? Be considerate of the work and prayer that created this place. No pictures, love thy neighbor, and leave every area cleaner than you found it. What? God told us it's your job to wash my ice cream restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> also, no photographic evidence of my ice cream restaurant. Yep. How would people be bringing in like entire cameras that don't break uh, the cell yeah, phone? Well, rule? you're not allowed to bring your cell phone. Yeah. yeah. yeah right, right. Fucking <laughs> bring in the red. <laughs> okay. But I guess a part of that made sense. Like the owners knew the name of the shop. It's going to sound like a fucking slur word most of the time when people from Alabama say it. So you have to respect the Italian homeland. I get that part. There's also a very real testimonial on the poster from a genuine person. It says, I lived in Italy one summer, and this feels exactly like it. Oh. I know God has great plans for this place. V.B. Oh, those are real letters. Yeah. yeah. And, and that them. plan, patrons, is for me to walk into this place covered in lube and glitter and refuse to leave till I'm <laughs> escorted out by the cops. 
Patreon gold oh, people. Yeah, because because I feel like we could squeeze you into, especially with enough lube, we could squeeze you into those rules, right? Like we put you in some shoulder pads, a bib over your cleavage, a Superman cape covering your back, knee pads. Otherwise, just balls out, dick hanging naked. I that yeah. that counts, right? I have to do they this. They did not mention dicks. Yeah, they didn't. I literally googled what trespassing charges are in Alabama <laughs> this morning. How bad is it? It's thirty days. I'm so oh, willing. Oh, I, really, yeah, okay. nice. I would love a vacation. Fantastic. <laughs> One other detail worth noting: get laid. This whole thing is a cult. Yeah, all their profits yeah. go to the Caritas of Birmingham Ministry which was founded by the owner of the shop, Terry Cola Francesco. Apparently, Terry had a magical person over to his house one time in 1988, and he started a cult. Some lady from Bosnia-Herzegovina saw visions of the Virgin Mary in 1981. Then, seven years later, she had dinner with the gelato guy one time, and now he runs a cult financed by coffee, charcuterie, and gelato. So, don't go there. Unless you're doing a really good prank. B prank that's legal. Andrew said. Heath, I'm right here. I'm right here. We, already, <laughs> we worked out all the details and everything, buddy. You're okay. All right, and quick before Andrew bursts through the wall like Kool-Aid man yet again, we're going to close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, the Bible will get cocky enough to start calling a section the wisdom books. Hey, podcast listener, I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm No Illusions. As you know by now, Heath is very, very sick with the COVID-19 coronavirus COVID. And though we hate to say it, we need your help. As you know, the only cure for COVID as serious as the one our very own Heath Enright has is signing up to support our show over at patreon.com forward slash scathing atheists. That's right, Eli. In fact, if you visit our Patreon page right now, you'll see our humble goal of Heath not dying of COVID is well within reach. But if you don't reach that goal, he will die of COVID. Patreon.com slash scathing atheist. Okay, I think this might be a little much, guys. Hush now. Rest. Save your strength. Please don't touch my lips. Shh. Oh. <laughs> 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 And then I got Heath the like a jersey that he wanted. Yeah, and I got you that super nice kettle. Oh my god, it's so nice! It's like accents. the nicest thing in my house. They, it's right? so nice. Oh, uh, nice. Um, anyone else on on your lists on your guys' lists or for Christmas presents? No, no. Okay, Are you sure that there isn't anyone else that you guys want to get a gift for? Ah, uh, yeah, you know, pretty sure. Like my aunt and stuff. I'm going to send her some mm -hmm. fruit. Oh. oh. Okay. Cool. Did you guys get my gifts? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. Definitely got your gift. Cool. Hey, guys. You, everybody ready for Bible Peace Theater? The part of the show where we act out the Bible so our listeners don't have to read it? Absolutely. Don's being weird, by the way. I'm not. Thank you. That he is no. today. It's weird. So where were we? Uh, Psalms, I guess. Nice. Okay. Uh, what happens in those? Oh, nothing. Nothing. It's just, it's 150 poems about how great God is. You're just bad poems. Bad poems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So how do we sketchify those poems? I do. I have no idea, man. This was your idea. You wanted to do this. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We just skip Psalms then. What's what's after Psalms? Uh, Proverbs. Proverbs, perfect. Pro Proverbs are literally stories, right? So we'll just let's let's sketchify those. Yeah, I can see how you think that, but these ones are less stories and more like um, I would say the, the declarative statements. Yeah, racist oh, declarative yep. statements. Yeah, that sounds more like the Republican platform. Am I right? Shut the fuck up, Don. What? Don't you talk to Don like that? Yeah, but but yeah, Don, shut the fuck up. Hey, if 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 you wouldn't mind, no. That's fine. I'll be here just doing all the voices. The, the, the Simpsons. You do the Simpsons. Do this. I can do all the voices from Homestar Runner. Anyway. Nobody knows what that is. What is after the 
uh, declarative statements? It's uh, Ecclesiastes. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of that one. Everyone likes that one. Is there a story there? I, it's, I mean, it's the nicest so far, but no. No story. Okay. Uh, it's like three books. To, oh, what's after that? Song of Solomon's after that. And that is? Porn. Mm-hmm. Porn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we could fuck each other. We could fuck each other. Ooh. I We could. I don't think that's going to feel a C segment, though. Just think about baseball. Mm-hmm. We're fine. Okay. Okay. Let me ask this. Let me ask this. Where's the next book of the Bible where there's any kind of story at all? Uh, Isaiah is the first of the prophets. Okay. So we just need to cover the books that we skipped in a way that won't make people feel like we cheated them. Ooh, Anna could do it. Heath, I swear, if you're going back to the fucking suggestion. No, no, no. A song. Anna could do a song. A song that sums up four of the books of the Bible all at once? Yeah. I mean, only one way to find out. Well, I guess he's right. So, um, hit it, Anna? We close the book of Job, but that was just an appetizer. Now the books will lose the plot and act as an advisor. There's some To be kissed We'll bow down And wait patiently For thy most righteous face. We're yours to be deployed And dominated And smash the non-believers Give them measles, mumps, and fever Like they're sticking your cleaver Like they're trees and you're a beaver it's a handbook for Republicans on slobber Over prostitutes and strange women and clobber Your kids don't spare the rod and spoil the child If you're poor, it's probably your fault Don't come crying to God, even if life is shitty You must have done something wrong, it's all your fault Put on a happy facade, go cry in your wife's titties Everything that goes wrong is your fault Whoa, what a tone shift Ecclesiastes, here we go I didn't expect that Oh, now it makes sense to the rest of the Bible The best parts contradict the rest of the book Galileo what? was almost murdered by the Catholic Church What does that have to do with anything? Nothing, let's get to the head baby part now It's like reading your dad's text to your mom and thinking, oh my God, I don't think I was supposed to see this. For the Bible, it's really horny, but for porn, it's kind of corny with a weird euphemisms for the China boobs and pee. It's like these books were put here just to hypnotize 
to break up the monotony and maybe even energize. They promised to drop some knowledge on us, but that was just a web of lies. They promised books of wisdom, but See, told you. Um, for the record, I was completely open to fucking each other. Just we just we so that, know you yeah, were. We know. Gone. You bring it up a lot, man. Like <sighs> a lot. Okay, Isaiah. So this is like the end of the world, right? Uh, depends on who you ask. Oh, why can't anything about this book be easy? Yeah, no, that's fair. But yeah, scholars agree that Isaiah is probably at least three different writers trying to write about history as prophecy. But modern Christian scholars very much pretend that it's it's all about Jesus. Okay, well, which of those are we going to do? Oh, the Jesus one is way funnier. Yeah, it's funnier. Got it. Everybody, listen to me. I'm Isaiah. uh, I have a message from God. Oh, yeah, Isaiah? How so? Well, like, God is mad at us and he doesn't want any more sacrifices. So instead, he wants us to obey his laws and feel him. But but not make sacrifices? Oh, no, no. He wants the sacrifices. Just like, you know, only after you behave. Okay. Uh, got it. But like, seriously behave because he's super pissed. Super pissed. Yeah, understood. This is a Homestar Runner impersonation, just for anyone at home gotcha. who is confused. Homestar Runner. What? Everybody! Everybody! What? What is it now, Isaiah? Oh, I got another vision from God, you guys. Okay. And? Oh, and? Um, at the end of the world... There will be no more war, and everyone will take their swords and beat them into plowshares. And their spears are going to be pruning tongs. Well, I, I guess as long as the technology of war never, you know, surpasses swords and spears, that's a very meaningful prophecy. Why? Right? But, hey, it's like one way or the other. It's good that there will be no more wars, huh? That's true. Uh, no. Um, no. Because it's a bad thing. Sorry, the end of war is a bad thing? That's my question, exactly. Uh, yeah. And God's going to, like, um, make an earthquake. Got it. Got it. So we'll keep rooting for wars then. Hey, sorry, Isaiah, are you worried that literally every earthquake from now till the end of time is going to make some nutbag think it's the end times from now on? No. Okay. Okay. Just um, checking. Like you will. Oh, guys, guys. Let let me guess, man. Another prophecy. Oh, yeah. Trust me. This one is bad. You are going to be ruled by children. Um, I mean, that's weird. Wouldn't say bad, necessarily. That's irritating more than anything. Perhaps, yeah. Oh, no. Trust me, you guys. It's going to be bad. Hear ye, hear ye, the king has declared he would like all the kingdom to eat juice pouches and nothing else. Also acceptable are tinting crackers and Cheerios. Anyone found engaging in the cooking or serving of vegetables shall be executed on sight. Also tonight, there should be a feast and a celebration where the court player shall play the first 11 minutes of a booba episode. Anyone caught playing more than 11 minutes of booba will be executed. See? It gets worse than children. Your next rulers will be women. Okay. Aren't there like established female monarchs all over the world at this point? Yeah. I feel like 
this wouldn't be shocking even to Bronze Age people like us. Oh, right. oh, but they're going to be all like, ooh, showy about it. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, I hate when women are showy. Rabble, rabble, patriarchy. Gross. Oh, but don't worry. The Lord will take away the bravery of their tickling ornaments about their feet. Nice. Oh, and their calls, and their round tiles like the moon, and their chains, and the bracelets, and the muffles, and their bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and yeah. the earrings. Yeah, 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 man, we got There's it. There's a long list. We don't really need long. Any oh, yeah, and their wings, and their nose jewels, and the changeable suits cool. of apparel, and the mantles, what? and the wimples, and the crisping pins, you know, the little crisping pins, and the glasses, and the fine linen, oh, and the hoods, and the veils. Jesus. Okay, we got it, Isaiah. We got it. God is going to take their things. Thank you. Oh, it's also going to smell bad. Got it. Yeah. Oh, but that's not all. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying... We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So, in other words, strong, independent women. Mm, patriarchy, oh. patriarchy, patriarchy, patriarchy. Worst. Oh, uh, yeah. And a big smoke cloud. So, uh, hold on. Are you. Are you sure this is the end of the world and not just California? I mean, what's the difference? Fair point. Yeah. Want to hear a song about a vineyard? No. Oh, you don't drink alcohol, huh? Go fuck yourself, man. Oh, oh, that's fell. Ooh, ooh. Hey, did I tell you guys about the time I met God? No. You, you met God. Okay, so we're clear we are allowed to drink alcohol. Oh, I remember it. Like it was yesterday. Okay, really quick. We're gonna need a definite yes on the alcohol. Uh, oh, I said we I here. remember it like it was yesterday. Lulu, <laughs> do, do, doing Isaiah's stuff. Isaiah's stuff is my favorite stuff. Isaiah, Isaiah, it's me, God. So God is Trump again. I mean, he's running. I feel like we bought ourselves another election cycle, right? Did we? Oh, no. You're just saying that because Sarah won governor and you get to keep doing her. Don't blame me that my characters are evergreen. Evergreen till you die of COVID. Anyway, these are my six-winged angels, Sarah and Melania. What up? How's it going? Galosh. Oh, God. I am unclean and unworthy of your presence. Yeah, no problem. You want a hot coal? Um, like to eat? Sure, yeah, why not? I mean, because I'm a person, and that would probably kill me. All right, whatever. More coal for me. Anyways, mm. anyways, uh, Isaiah, Hot. I want you to tell everyone that I'm mad at them. Oh, okay, for how long? Till everyone is dead. Okay, how long is that going to be? You're really not familiar with these books, are you? No. King Oz, King Oz, I break a prophecy for God. Sure, I say. What is it? Oh, don't you want like a sign or a miracle to prove I'm actually conveying God's message? It doesn't. Doesn't your guide kill people for asking for signs? I mean, he has been known to. I I think I'll just take your word for it, man. Oh, okay. So, are you ready? Yeah. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, because this is a big one. Like, it's the most important prophecy in the whole Bible so far. Oh, all right. Hit me with it, dude. Okay, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Dude, who the fuck is Emmanuel? Uh, Jesus. They got Jesus's fucking name wrong? I mean, we, I mean, we do call him Emmanuel. Do we call him Emmanuel because that's his name or because it's this prophecy? Yeah, it's the latter. So, Sorry, I just want to clarify here. In the Bible... They got Jesus' name wrong in the book that they've had control over and edited for thousands of years. Yes. Yes, they do. That, that's correct. Yeah. This book is so stupid. Yep. Yes, it is. Also correct. 
okay, okay, man. I will keep an eye out for a guy named Emmanuel. Anything else? Oh, oh yeah. There's going to be a big war with Syria and Egypt. Oh, how's that going to go? Oh, don't worry. We're going to shave their feet, if you know what I mean. Sorry, did did you say we were going to shave their feet? Oh, yeah. You know, because feet are dicks in the Bible. So, so we're going to shave their dicks? Yeah, 100%. What is that? What is what? What, what does that mean? We're going to shave their dicks? Is that, a, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Oh, it's a good thing. Like, you know. Oh, shit. I'm going to shave your dick. Oh, okay, yeah. So Isaiah... Did somebody tell you that was an expression? Um, yeah. I, I thought so. Okay, so that person, they were tricking you into shaving their dick. What? Or, or, or letting them shave your dick. I, just, I honestly don't know which, and I don't want to know which, but that's, that's what that was, okay? No way. You're messing with me. Nope. But, but I, put, I put it in the Bible. I, I, I gotta go. Yeah, well, Cousin Tony, you made me look like a real idiot in front of the king. No, it would not help if you shaved my dick. Look, I gotta go. God is here, and he wants to talk with me. Hey, there he is, Isaiah. Isaiah, were you just on the phone right now? There's no phones. I, I did, but that was the best way to resolve that bit. No, it was. Fair. Okay, look, I need a favor. Malala, she's been feeling a little down. Not a lot to do in the Bible since we did the Tower of Babel, you know. So I'm hoping you'd be okay with letting her name your kid. Oh, the one I had with the prophet. I mean, sure, what was she thinking? Uh, Maha Shala Hashbaz. Um, seriously? Yes, I think, I think she was going for Marshmallow House Boss, but honestly, your guess is as good as mine at this point. Um... For Hugo Gods? That's the one. Yeah. Okay, good. Yep, I'll, I'll see you around. Did you tell him? Yep, I told him, baby. He loved it. All right! And will everyone with a biblical name like myself spends a quick second thanking their mom for not picking that one. We're going to stop there, but we'll be back next month with more Bible Peace Theater. <laughs> Before we wrap up this sandwich and ring the bell, I want to remind you to check the show notes for a link to get tickets to God Awful Movies live in Seattle on March 18th. And if you really want to see me in March, but that's exactly the wrong corner of the country for you, you can also come see me at Free Flow the weekend before that in Orlando, Florida. Tickets are already on sale for the best skeptical event in the Southeast. You'll find a link to those in the show notes as well. Anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be able to look out for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptic Crowd, debuting at 7 Eastern on Monday, and even newer episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half sister show, Citation Nita, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I'd have to hang my head in shame if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for knowing what's up, Eli Bosnick for giving us the lowdown, Lucinda Illusions for never giving in, Anna Bosnick for always going all out, and Don Ford for being here, because standing still is also a direction. I also want to thank Joe Mudock for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. I haven't read any of his erotica, but based on the titles, it seems pretty damn clever. If you want to find out for yourself, be sure to check the link in the show notes. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best bipeds, Philip, Eric, Bill, Tim, Chris, Shirty, the Slightly Aggressive Bear, Aaron, Jay, Karamia, Diva, Dave, H, Donovan, and Portly Monteau. Philip, Eric, Bill, and Tim, whose dicks are so big it's physically impossible for them to keep a gun half-cocked. Chris, Shirty, Aaron, and Jay, who are so hot the shower turns to steam before it even gets to them, and Karamia Diva, Dave, Donovan, and Portly, who are so smart Ludwig von Siegfried tries to get them. Sorry, sometimes I gotta throw the boomers a bone, right? Together, these 12 tremendously titillating totems of tender-heartedness traded temporal treats and transmitted tidings to tender to us by giving us money. If you, too, would like to give us money, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll only access to an extended ad-free version of every episode. Or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help but not in a way where you end up with less money, you can also help a ton by telling a friend about the show, following us on social media, and leaving a five-star review. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Martin Clark, who has sold all music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com.
Uh, so wait, so Eli's the last man standing. Tontine, I'm the last of all my friends. You've had COVID, COVID. I still you haven't just don't it. take tests. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.